Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemaker TV. In today's video for WordPress, I'm going to be showing you the latest version of Slider Revolution 5 and all of the new updates that have been made to the interface. Now this is a pretty major update and alongside the add-ons that have been added into it, which we'll cover in a different video, there's been a range of new features that have been built into the interface to make your working with Slider Revolution 5 much more intuitive, quicker and easier. So let's take a look at those new updates right now. So as someone that spends a lot of time every single day when building websites, dealing with creating sliders, anything that Theme Punch can do to make my daily grind that little bit easier is welcomed. And with this new iteration of Slider Revolution 5, they've really added some great new features to it. So what we're going to do with this video is I'm going to give you an overview of some of those features. I'll demonstrate some different things and just talk through and just show you what has been added to this great piece of software. So as you can see, I'm looking at a slider at the moment, and I've got three slides on there. And anyone that uses this on a regular basis will realize that we now have a new button, and that's the object library. Now, we used to have in the media library, where we can go in and we can choose the files we want to work with in our slider for the background and so on. We now have this object library. So you can see if I click on that, that will open up a new window and you can see I've got a range of different photographs that I can work with. Now at the moment we can categorize those down based upon beach, city, nature, night and so on. And I'm sure this is something that will expand as they bring out newer versions of Slider Revolution. You can also check out the license information to make sure that any image you use in your slider, you have the right license in for. Just make sure you keep on the right side of the copyright. So I recommend checking that before you use any of these images. But you can see we can easily filter these down to any of the particular groupings that they have in there. And as we mouse over, you can see we now get some little symbols for the different sizes that we have available. So you've got medium, large and O for whatever that stands for. And underneath it tells us what the actual physical dimensions of that image is. We can search for objects if we want to. So we could say we wanted a road, for example, and you can see that will now filter it down to show us all the ones that fit that particular category. So we can just get rid of that. And let's just say that I want to choose one of these and I'm going to use this in multiple different slides. So what I can do is I can come to the top right hand corner and I can click on the little star and that will now make that a favorite. So you can see I can add that one in there as a star and then I go back and I can click on favorites and anything that's been starred will now show up in my favorite section, which is quite a good way of making sure that you can just speed up the process of finding images that you want to use on a regular basis. So that's, that's the first thing that's pretty cool. So let's just choose one of these images. Let's go for the O to give us the 1920. And that will then change the background to that image that I've just created. So let's just get rid of this layer a second. So we've got a good bank of images. And like I say, I'm sure this will expand as it grows and new iterations come out of Slider Revolution. But it's a great starting point if you don't have the time or you're just prototyping a website for someone and you just want to drop some images into Slider Revolution, then this is a great way of doing that to get started. So that's the first thing that's been added in there. Now let's take a look at some of the other things that have been added in when we're working with images. So next up, let's move down to the actual slide itself, where we can start working with editing it. You'll see that we have the object library icon again. Now what this is going to do is it's going to open up the same kind of browser, but it's going to give us a lot more options. You can see we're looking at the favorites, but you also notice we now have some icons and we have some graphics and some different things in there. And we've also got a lot more categories we can filter this information through, including at the top SVG icons, PNG files and JPEG files. So let's just say, for example, we want to go to PNG. You can see we now have a whole range of different objects that we can start using to build up our slides. A massive array in there, all completely free to use. Again, check the license info for the purpose that you're using them for. But you can see there's a big, big collection of different images in there, and some great ones, things like iPhones and BlackBerry. So if you're developing a technology-based slider, then you have, instead of having to go through and download all of these kind of things, you have access to a massive amount of different images that you can quickly load in. The same goes with the icons. You can see we have a whole range of icons available. And again, we can filter these out and do whatever we want with them via that. So that's a really cool way of being able to quickly add in new things into your sliders without having to go and download these separately. So again, a great tool. 
So moving on to some of the new additions we've got to Slider Revolution, if we scroll down, you can see now underneath where we've got our timeline, we now have two new buttons. One is Add Group and one is Add Row. Now we're going to take a look at the Add Group a bit later on, but for now we're going to concentrate on the Add Row. And what that allows us to do is, if you've ever used something like Visual Composer or any of the kind of layout tools, everything works in rows and columns. And what you can do now with Slider Revolution is you can create the same kind of layout. So if you want to create a, a design that includes a large full screen background that animates through different images and you'd like to have a design over the top of that you can now use slider revolution to build that design and in future videos we will take a look at all of these different features in a lot more detail and we'll build up different pages and things using these different tools but for now I want to give you a brief overview so let's go down let's click on add a row and you'll find once we do that it now creates three new layers so we've got two columns with this current default layout and one row so if we scroll to the top, you see we now have this green block that shows us two columns on one row. We have these three icons that allow us to do various different things. The first one allows us to change the row layout and how it interacts with different kinds of devices, so tablets and phones and so on. So if we click on that, you can see we can now choose a range of different layout options from a single column, dual column, triple column, and so on. So we can choose anything we want from this. So for this example, let's just choose the triple column. If we click on that again, you can see we also have break columns at laptop size, tablet size, or mobile size. So we can say, we could just select which device this actually breaks into different layers. So we'll leave it as mobile for now, just for this demonstration. We'll hit update, and you can now see we have three columns inside our row. So now we can put different elements inside there. So let's go and create a text layer like we would normally. So we we'll click add layer and click text HTML. I'm just going to paste some text in there that I've already copied and click to confirm that. Now all I need to do is just drag that up, drop it over any of the columns and you can see they highlight to tell me which one is going to drop it into. I can let go and that'll drop the text in there. And now we can style this and we can style the actual columns and the rows themselves to make sure that everything lays out exactly how we like it to. So let's go and duplicate this two more times, create the additional two columns, and then let's start styling this information to lay it the way we want. So before we do copy it, let's just set the text to the way that we want it to look. So we're going to click on that to make sure that's active. We'll change the font. Now this operates in exactly the same way as you would when you're working with Slider Revolution in its normal fashion. So nothing here is different. It's only when we start to go on and do some of the other things. So let's just set this down to a 14, and we'll set the lines to be about... Actually, the line looks tidy on there. Color, we can change that if we want to. We can change the font weight and so on. What's important to note at this point is when you create a block of text like this, when you've got it selected, make sure you set the width to be auto. You can see we have a range of options, and you may find you've got a numeric value in there if you've adjusted anything yourself. Set it to auto, and it will automatically wrap the text around in the way you expect it. So we'll see it the way it is on here at the moment. So just something to be aware of. So we set that up, the basics of it. So what I'm going to do now is click on there, and I'm just going to duplicate that. So you can see I can come up and duplicate it. So we'll clone it twice, drag it over to the next, drag it over to the third one. So nothing that you haven't already done if you've ever used anything like Elementor or Visual Composer. But now we can go in and control various different aspects of these columns and these rows. So if I click on the column of text, you can see we've got all the normal options available to us. And if I come over and just expand this out, we can now do a few other things. So let's just say we wanted to set a background color on there. So we set the background and we'll set that to be, we'll go for, well, I'll go for black. We'll set the transparency on there to about 0.8. So we end up being able to see the image underneath it. So we set that up. So you can see that now allows some transparency through there. What we can do then is we can come over, we can choose any of the other options. So if we want to, we can add some padding in there. We can also add margins to it. So remember, we're only dealing with this text box inside the confines of this particular block inside our row. So let's click on that. Let's just set the padding on there to 20 on each one of those. So you can see we now have some nice space around there. If we want to, we can add some margins around this as well. So let's just go and do the same on there. So we'll set that to 20. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a moment. So now we've separated that from the outside edge of the box. So we now have a nice, neat layout. Text is styled the way we want it to. We've got a transparent background, and we've got some space around the row and the column. 
Now, if I wanted to, I could duplicate that and just take over these. But what I'm going to do quickly is I'm just going to go and set these up so all three look exactly the same. I'll pause the video and be back in a second. Okay, so there's our three columns all set up nice and neat. Everything laid out the way we expect it to look, which is cool. So the next thing we can do is we can actually control the way the actual columns work or the row works. So if we come down to this little teardrop icon, click on that, we're now going to make edits to the actual row itself. So we're no longer editing the text or HTML blocks or whatever you place inside these rows and columns. We're editing the row and the column independently. So you can see if we want to, we can come to the background, for example, and we'll set this one, we'll set this to white. We'll do the same again, we'll set this down to 0.6, so it's even more transparent. So we're getting a sort of transparent effect on top of a transparent effect, so we now have a nice, a nice layout. If we want to, we can just select these and we can align them, so we can make sure that everything is aligned the way we want. So now we align that to the center, so that's in the center of our, our slider. So... You know, we have a whole range of control we can do with this. We can come to any of these options and now apply to the row and the column. So we could, if we wanted to, we could add padding in there, we could add margins in there. And that's now going to affect that as opposed to being affecting what's inside each of those blocks. You can also come into advanced CSS and you can add extra things in there if you want to build these up and put buttons and so on. You know, you can build these up to be quite complex layouts. But we're going to keep it simple. Let's just save that. Let's just jump over then to our test page and take a look at what this looks like on the page itself. So as you can see, it looks pretty good. We've got all the, the elements laid out the way you expect it to. If I refresh the page, we'll see how the animation takes effect. So let's just refresh. And there you go. You can see that that builds up the animation. So we can easily build up a layout that we want. Quite complex layouts, quite easy by using these rows and columns. So that's a great addition. Now there's a lot more things you can do to this. And like I say, in a future video, we will come in and take a look at this in a lot more detail. But for now, that's how we work with this new columns and rows feature where we can build things up in building blocks. Pretty cool. Now quickly before I wrap this up and move on to the next option, I want to just quickly go through and show you that you can rename any of these items. So as you build up more complex layouts, it can get quite difficult to keep track of everything. So you see if we expand the top, everything is set up, we've got columns, and inside there we've got the different blocks that we've got. So this, for example, is the first block there. We can just click in there, select all of the text by Control command a and we can change this to something else. So we could call this block one for example and you can see we also have the option to rename it we can just move things and delete things and clone things and so on so we can very quickly organize our information very easily just by using this way of going through and renaming everything so it's something to bear in mind when you are creating complex layouts keep your life easy by going in and naming things and giving them some kind of relevancy to what you're doing Anyway, let's move on. So next up, let's take a look at how we can group objects together with the new add group function. So if we take a look, I've got two objects, two SVG objects or shapes that are on screen. I've set them up where I want, but obviously if I want to move these around, they are independent of each other. So it means that I've got to make sure that everything is aligned every time I move them, which can be a little bit of a pain. But with the new add group option, if I just click to add a group and we'll just name this, call it test group, that'll do for me. You can see that what we have is this box and you can see I can move the box around and it doesn't do anything other than move around. So what I can do is if I drag any of these items into that box area, they become grouped. So if I drag this over, you see that it starts to highlight when I go over it. I can drop it in there and that now becomes indented. You can see we're now working with the group itself. So the entire background gets uh, darker because it tells us we're working inside a group. So once I click outside that, the image goes back to the way it was. We now have our group. So I can do the same thing again with the second icon. I can just drag that over, drop it in there when it highlights, and you can see that now becomes grouped. If I want to, I can resize this box to get it to make a little bit more sense. So let's just do that. Position the icons in relation to each other inside the grouping. Resize the grouping box if I need to. And now I can drag that box around and the relationship between the two icons is kept in place because we're not moving the independent icons, we're moving the group. And also if we come down and take a look at our timeline below, you can see now that SVG or the two icons that we have, which we could rename to make a little bit more logical sense, are now indented inside our test group grouping. 
So that tells us that we have a group available to us. We can still go through and we can edit the timeline and we can adjust the way that things animate in and animate out and all those kind of good things. But the reality is this just means that you can synchronize everything together into a nice layout and then you can just drag it around in position wherever you want to make your life that much easier to keep the relationship between the items inside that group. So that's how we can group objects together. The other powerful thing about when you work with groups is that you're not limited to only working with the objects inside that group. You'll see at the moment we have the group selected by the background going darker and this being outlined to tell us that that's what's currently selected. If we come to the top, you can see we still have things like the background and so on that we can still edit. So if we wanted to, we could create a background color in there. So we could set this to be a background color and set a transparency level on it. So we'll set that to 0.8. So we now have a background effect on this. We click outside that, you can now see that that takes on the characteristics that we've just set up on it. So we're not limited to just the object inside it. We can actually style and control the actual grouping itself, which again is pretty cool. So you can use that, group everything together, get everything nice and aligned, and then we can just use the alignment icons. We're now perfectly in the center with a colored background. If we want to, we can come in there, we can apply paddings and borders and margins and things to this. So it really is a very powerful and versatile way of working. Also, if we come down to the section where we can go and choose our different layers to work on, we expand that out, you can see everything is laid out in there. So if I want to quickly come in and rename this, I can come in and I can just specify a name that I want or I can change the icon. I've got a whole range of great things that I can do. And again, this is just one of those awesome little features that's been added in there to make you working with complicated projects so much quicker and easier. So that's pretty cool. So there's one more thing I want to show you before I wrap this video up, and that is on the timeline itself. Now, if you ever used Slider Revolution to create your timing, you know yourself that the adjustment of the duration that it takes to do for the fades and so on can be a little bit awkward. Well, They've updated the way that the timeline actually operates now, and it's just made it so much easier. You can see we've got thicker lines. We've got rid of the little sort of dot at the beginning and the end to show the duration of the transition. We've now got this block, which gives us a number on it, which we can still edit, but it doesn't have that horrible lag that the earlier versions had. So you can see if I want to make a change to this, I can literally come to the left-hand side, drag it over. If I want, if I drag that over to the left-hand side, you can see it automatically just stretches the duration of the transition. So obviously I can still come to the right hand side of that and I can adjust that, but the latency that you had there is gone. It really is quite a nice, quick and really intuitive way of working. So we can now reposition things. You can see I can reposition that to control the time that these different things come in. And the same goes with the actual grouping itself. I can control that. So you can see very quick and very easy way of working with things. So it's just one of those little enhancements that just makes the working with this particular function in Slider Revolution just that little bit more like working in a dedicated application as opposed to working in your browser. Now, like I say, all of the things that I've touched upon in this video, I will be going into a lot more detail in their own dedicated videos where I'll show you how to create great looking sliders using these different building blocks we've covered today. Well, I hope you found this video useful. hope it's given you a reason to go away, download the latest version of Slider Revolution, whether you've got it as part of your theme or you're looking to buy it. If you are looking to buy it, please use the, the link in the description below, which is an affiliate link, and it gives us a little bit of money back to help put in more into doing our video tutorials. Anyway, if you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add every single week. If any comments, questions or feedback on this video, please pop those in the comment section. And until next time, take care.